brief message from your friendly neighborhood editing Jordan. We tend to try to keep things pretty PG-13 around here, but this is an improv podcast. So who knows what we're going to say. Sometimes we throw in some swearing, some sexual content, and some violence. So as a general warning, viewer discretion is advised. Also to be noted, the opinions stated about a certain tabletop role-playing game are just that, our opinions. We love the game and we like talking about it. So any criticisms are really just all in good fun. That being said, wizards, please hire us. All right, with that out of the way, let's get on with the show. <laughs> Recording in shit your mouth. This is violence against women, and I cannot condone it. No, it's violence against this specific woman. I you, I hope you'll condone it. <laughs> violence against AI. Oh, Speaking violence against about, AI, I do condone. Well, I don't know if there's any movie about that necessarily that the creators fits this genre. Well, I mean, just just came out with with the genre of horror, but um, and there it's about are how people who treat AI bad or bad. So Jordan's bad. Pertuza was the one that was instigating violence. Against a woman, not AI. <laughs> Speaking about films that advocate for violence against women, we're here to talk about slasher movies. Oh. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Nat One Podcast, a.k.a. Nope, because nope, you're not going to want to hear what we're about to have to say. I'm Pertuza. I'm Levi. And I'm Jordan. Great That's transition. Great Quality. Thank you. I guess it doesn't really advocate, but it showcases. Oh, I don't know. Absolutely. That is like the main feature of the slasher genre. Yeah. I, I think advocate was a poor choice of words. It doesn't really say, it's not the moral of the films. It's not. Levi. I just. Levi is advocating for violence against women. I'm laughing at violence against women, excuse you. It gets worse. It keeps getting worse. (laughs) I just wanted to talk about slasher films, and I wanted to segue. (laughs) Oh, maybe you'll get one for Christmas if you're good enough. What about my birthday? That too. (laughs) Okay. Um... I don't know. Jordan, why don't you arbitrarily explain what we're arbitrarily deciding to do today? All right. So for our next installment of Spooky Month, coming back around to things that are actually scary, uh, we're going to be building slashers in D&D and trying to make them not all fighters. (laughs) So we're going to be doing the big uh, slasher baddies that you know and love. Uh, I think we're going to try to do Freddy, Jason, and Michael Myers. Mm-hmm. And then we might get Ghostface and a couple more in there if we have time. And Hank yeah. from Breaking Bad. Yep. I, so all right. <laughs> all right. So I don't know. Is there one you guys particularly want to pick first? Actually, let's go ahead and start with this. Who's your favorite slasher of the big three? I and really like. I really like Nightmare on Elm Street just because I really like the movie. So I'm gonna have to go with Freddy Krueger. That is a good one, Levi. I don't know what it is, but something about Jason is just like I think iconic slasher when I think Do of Jason. Do we have all three? Is and this is very funny. <laughs> I haven't. Here's the thing, though, is I haven't even seen the move the Jason movies, but for some reason, for me, Jason is like that image of slasher, and That's I don't fair. know why. Because I have seen Nightmare on Elm Street, so uh. I haven't seen that Mar- not Nightmare uh, right. Nightmare on Elm Street, but I have seen now Friday the Thirteenth, the first one. That's the only one I've seen, and the Halloween. I've seen all the Halloweens, um, and so you could probably guess by that that my favorite is actually Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> so we have all three covered. So I don't know. We're just gonna have to like uh, pick one and go. Um, no. Eeny, meeny, miny. Let's draw straws. Oh, okay. Does anybody have like a, a starting point Michael. for one? Okay. Terrence says Actually, Michael. Actually, he there says Missle. <laughs> I, I prefer to think of it as like Icicle, the second half. So it's Mickle. like Nickel. Yeah. Mads Mickelson. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll take that. Sure. Okay. So what are the defining marks of Michael Myers? He's silent. He's just a dude, but he like never really dies from anything somehow. He has yeah. to have some speed capping thing. Like, the, mm, <laughs> he true. can't move fast. He does not move fast at all. Uh, he yeah. has my homebrew item, the boots of sprint resistance. Yeah, you. <laughs> I think he has an item that he sacrifices movement speed for attacks per turn. Mm-hmm. True. <laughs> because, 
in the new Halloween reboot that came out in like 2018, which some people hate, some people don't like. Uh, I think that one was good. I don't know if I like the sequels, but never mind. Um, in that, there's a whole scene of him just walking down like through backyards and he just keeps killing people left and right as he's just walking down slowly. Very cool. Or, or maybe I pause it. This is the most ridiculous one. Since he's basically indestructible, he's always wearing full plate mail and he just walks really, really slowly. So he still gets the stealth. He's not proficient with it at all. No, he's <laughs> not. It's just, but he's it's working for him, but he's really slow. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, he doesn't have anybody he's connected to. His whole thing, we have no idea at all where his powers come from. There's no thing that says why he's so indestructible, why mm -hmm. he's so stealthy. He just had a bad time as a kid and then was like a killer, locked up, broke free. That's like it. <laughs> so I don't think, uh, again, we're going for like, we're trying to make them all different classes, sort of. So I feel like if anyone's going to be a non-magical one, it would be him. I feel like he might get the spot as the rogue, especially since his backstory just kind of screams rogue. <laughs> True, dead parents. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. Dead family, no connections, him. just likes to stab mm -hmm. people. Very quiet. <laughs> that would make him not proficient in heavy armor as well. Yep. <laughs> Which is why he's so fucking slow. And that's why he doesn't take damage either, is because he has evasion. <laughs> yep. There we go. Um. Oh, but then what subclass is he? That is the question. Is he an assassin? I don't think so. I think he is inquisitive. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Myers known for going, hmm, I wonder. <laughs> uh, let's Certainly look. Certainly be an arcane trickster. He's not a swashbuckler. <laughs> I mean, I think the best fit would have to be assassin, really, because there's nothing else that I think applies to him, because everything else is too supernatural or not at all his vibe. I was gonna say scout, but then they have the ability that's super mo superior mobility, and that just yeah. that doesn't work. We can't do that. <laughs> he might be a phantom if you just think of it less supernaturally. Mm. Um. Okay, I could see that maybe. Yeah. He does he seen... have any? Does he have any tiny trinkets that he carries with him? Usually, he has He's his knife and his mask. <laughs> It says he says something can be a soul trinket. His mask. <laughs> oh, he can have a maximum number of soul trinkets equal to his proficiency bonus. Mm. Can. Doesn't have to. And he has advantage on death saving throws while he's got one. When he deals sneak attack damage, you can destroy one of your soul trinkets and immediately use whales from the... What is... What? I've never read this subclass. I've never, I've never read either. Same. I'm like, I'm <laughs> stuck on the... As oh, you nudge yeah, this someone is close the to the grave, you can, I mean, you can target a second creature that you can see within. Oh, so you just get a thing where you can make a second attack if you sneak attack someone. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's hard to say. Oh, no, not a second attack. You just deal damage to them. To, to someone, yeah. Because I'm looking at it like, he might be an assassin for the first feature. But he's mm -hmm. not an assassin for the next two. Mm. Yeah, he is yeah. not an infiltration expert. <laughs> mm -hmm. He did bring Radiant out a mental facility. We'll get to them last. Uh, no. <laughs> Although death strike, I think. Yeah, that's mm. the thing. The middle is like phantom, but the edges are assassin. Yeah, I don't know. I I'm still looking at scout minus the superior mobility. I, parts of that just it seems like the especially sudden strike i think kind of mm. i don't know i'm on the fence he's a little bit of everything <laughs> he is <laughs> the rogue he's got uh, he's got elements of all three of them john mm. rogenheimer if i if i were making also i'm gonna just ignore what you said but i'm gonna <laughs> If I were making this character with a DM, I'd ask to have like a little bit of each of these features. But let's assume we can't. We have to pick one for this character sheet. Which one fits the best, even if it's not necessarily a good fit? Which one comes the closest on its own? If it's... If it's... 
it's hard. They're they've all got good bits. Uh I'm going scout. Ambush master and sudden strike is too close. That's true. I hate that when you put Michael Myers into YouTube, the first thing is Fortnite. <laughs> and, huh? and not yeah, no, the first result is Fortnite and then theme song. What the heck? Because I was ba, 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 I was gonna ba, ba, put ba, yeah, I was gonna put his theme song ba, ba, in the background while we were doing this, but no, Fortnite comes up first. <laughs> I'm willing to move away from Phantom. Phantom seems cool, but it's too based on the trinket and mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm split between Assassin and Scout. I'm also split between Assassin and Scout. The imposter doesn't make sense. Yeah. However, infiltration I can kind of understand because several times in the films he has broken out of places he shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Just somehow. <laughs> um well, and then assassinating then... death striker yeah that just but, makes sense but i i'm really pushing for scout now even with the escape stuff it's not it's not necessarily implied that it's sleight of hand and you do get proficiency with nature and survival so i feel like breaking out of a facility would be a survival check maybe i don't know we, we never really see how he does it. The only time we saw it was in Halloween 2018 when he he straight up was being te- he was being transported on a bus to another facility. Mm-hmm. The bus crashed and he just got up and got out. So, <laughs> so I don't so know. So he has the lucky feet is what I'm hearing. <laughs> I think that's part of his indestructible nature. <laughs> he has the tough He's feet. A luck He's a tough and lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Taryn, which one is it? Is he an assassin or is he a scout? Sorry, Big Jim. <laughs> okay, Taryn's opinion has been invalidated. Oh, okay, there we go. Heck yeah. He changed. He gave us a real answer. All right. Okay, Taryn, is, Taryn took it for us. We're going to put him in scout. Woo. Audience, you at home, we're pretty split on this, so why don't you leave your impressions as well, which one you'd rather... But honestly, be? without without lumping him into a single thing, I would probably say, as a DM, I would make a custom subclass for him. I would do a oh, homebrew, yeah. but, not, but not just like a brand new, like, make it all yourself. I would probably just do what we said and just, like, rip out Bits the pieces. different features from yeah. Scout, Assassin, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Phantom, and then just put them all into one subclass and have it be the the phantom of the opera <gasps> what <gasps> there uh, no not inside your mind um okay let's Someone just make go. a remix of the michael myers theme with the phantom of the opera song i guarantee there is one there has to be um i don't know which one of you wants to go next for yours your pick i want to go next okay <laughs> simple enough <laughs> I think that Jason. Jason. Hmm, what would Jason be? I think hmm. that I'm thinking about his powers first. He, yeah, same. He's either gonna be a barb or a fighter, in my opinion. Well, I think he might be one of our supernaturals. One of the ones maybe? that may be a half caster or mm-hmm. caster. Maybe Paladin. Because the way, if you, I know in the first movie, which I just watched, spoilers for a movie from the 70s, so I don't feel that bad about spoiling it. He's not in the first movie, Friday the 13th. The killer is his mom getting revenge for his mm-hmm. death. He's dead. Mm-hmm. He's a walking corpse, unlike others. So that makes me think, we didn't even go over Michael's race, but he's probably just a human because he's basic. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that means that Jason is either an undead, like one of the lineages from Richton's Van Richten's, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. that makes him like a warlock. Because oftentimes Hex, we uh, pact of the blade warlock. That's what I'm thinking. He's blade yeah. warlock. Because several times in all the films, he's getting commands from his mother to kill people, like she's almost his patron or matron, I guess technically. So are we looking at maybe like undead or undying? That or Hexblade. Mm-hmm. Or it could Friday be undead the 13th, undying. Jason Voorhees has been depicted as a non-verbal, indestructible, machete-wielding mass murderer. Yep. He goes around killing camp kids. Say that five times fast. <laughs> killing camp kids. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think definitely if you just made him a pact of the blade and then just he went heavy on that with all of his um what are they called? The Eldritch doodads. He doesn't have any personality. He's like a great white shark. You can't really defeat him. All you can hope for is to survive, said Sean S. Cunningham. Yeah, invocations. Taryn got me. Um, He doesn't really heal, so I feel like if he were one, he's probably not uh, the undying. Because mm. that's the one that heals people. Although, let me read through it here a little bit. Because one of the features is called Defy Death. And that also feels like him. <laughs> A lot of emphasis on him just being like un- unstoppable and indestructible is what I'm getting. A lot this. of the features for undying is defy death, undying nature, and indestructible life. And maybe Those he's names, actually undying. Babe. Maybe. Beginning at 10th level, this is one of the ones for undying. You can hold your breath indefinitely. You don't require food, water, or sleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then just give him Pact of the Blade for his Pact. Yeah. Regular machete. Short yeah. sword. Because undead doesn't super make sense because that has form of dread and there's not really a thing where Jason transforms yeah. into super Jason. <laughs> He's just a big guy. Yeah. <laughs> Hexblade also doesn't super make sense because even though he has, he's he's the machete guy, he doesn't always use it or have access to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That one's pretty quick and easy. <laughs> Although, if we stick with that, what race are we going to give him? Derek Mares likens him to a more combination of John Rambo, Tarzan, and the abominable snowman from Looney Tunes. <laughs> true. If you say so. <laughs> uh, I suppose. I suppose true. I think he's a dragonborn. <laughs> I'd say probably what if we're going purely by the book, I'd say one of the Van Richten's lineages. Yeah. I think he's just a guy that doesn't happen to look very good and you guys are being mean. Taryn says he's a reborn. That's the one I was thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, In the first movie, he does make a sudden appearance and he does not look good. But he also, <laughs> he was like eight or something. He was super young when he died. And then in the next film, he's the buff machete wielding ski mask wearing guy we know him as. Yep. So I don't know what happened between movies, but he got yoked. He's like a fourteen-year-old <laughs> on roids. That's what happens when you got when you get a patron. I guess. Kill them, side effect. <laughs> oh. All right, so we're gonna make him a reborn, undying, um, pact of the blade warlock. Mm. Mm. Good, maybe we're going to get through this faster than we thought. I didn't realize how I, easy I think, this would be. Yeah, I think we're going to get through a couple of these. <laughs> All right, Jordan, announce our next combatant. All right, so for Freddy, I I was kind of leaning towards Warlock, but I've pivoted since we just did a Warlock. Mm-hmm. Um, So I'm thinking, hear me out, Shadow Magic Sorcerer for Freddy Krueger. Okay. Well, because, so they've got like, <laughs> so I'm looking at the features. Um, You've got, oh, where did it go? So, like, the shadow walk and umbral form of, like, those features of not being tangible is kind of what I'm thinking. Okay. Um, And I feel like, I feel like he has to be one of the ones that's magical considering that he's not, like, he's only in the dream realm. I think he's completely mundane. Well, shit. (laughs) Uh, Use use the swear word. Use his favorite swear word. Uh, (laughs) I was going to say Ashlands, and I'm not going to say that in the video. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the one swear word I won't, I won't say. I need some synonyms for bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use, I, I won't use, uh, I do have to give credit to Freddy Krueger. He's one of the only like slashers that is uh, famous for having a personality. The other two that we spoke about so are silent. True. He's the guy that he's spoke snarky. all the time. Love yeah. It. That's why he's my favorite. I like that he has like yeah there's some back and forth there What's um, like, this goes back to how i was talking about how i like smart villains i like yeah, i like video, quippy villains <laughs> there's a video which is just every time he says the b word yeah, yeah. <laughs> i wonder i think i'm with you on the sorcerer thing i wonder if he's not aberrant mind though see i toyed with that but that one's like alien ish which i mean granted you could reflavor it but i don't know mm. i i was that was the other one that kind of came up but i was looking at the shadow forms let, let me take a second look at aberrant mind i may be yeah. swayed that's what i was thinking is because it has a lot to do with 
other people's minds, mm-hmm. which obviously his is. Apparently in Freddy vs. Jason, he says the B word as many times as in all of his other films combined. That's funny <laughs> and makes sense. But it's also true. It's hard to say with that because like, again, he doesn't, I don't, as far as I know, we don't know why he is has his powers. He just kind of like was killed and then came back in people's dreams. Or has it been revealed? I think that they had some kind of explanation in the newest one Mm -hmm. where they kind of did something with it of like, this is why he haunts people. I don't remember. Um, I don't actually think I watched the new one. I I think I saw clips of it and we studied it in the film class, but um, they had some kind of explanation and it's some kind of ritual thing, which was why I was originally leaning towards Warlock. Mm -hmm. But with just like the going straight from nightmare on elm street i feel like he's just inherently magic yeah i'd agree with that i don't know i feel like this is another scout versus assassin issue where like Mm. there are things from each that it could go either way Mm. it is true we don't see him having much martial prowess at all so Mm -hmm. i think he is the one taryn you're wrong no i'm kidding (laughs) Taryn says he's a wizard. I would. The only thing I'm saying about not being a wizard, Taryn, is that there's he is not trained for this like at all. He no. just has this power. Yeah, it's not really yeah. like he he's trained. Yeah, it's more like he is just some kind of supernatural entity. So he just has the power inherently, and that would lean towards sorcerer. Otherwise, I would agree. Illusion wizard has a strong case. If it weren't for the wizard part, the illusion part makes sense. <laughs> but. He he multiclassed by like two levels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah, that's well, and also also one. the the shadow uh magic, the strength of the grave feature with you exist in a twilight state between life and death, since he is dead and yeah. not wanting to make him another reborn damn fear, I feel like that kind of fits that profile a little bit. True. If we if we uh, maybe that'll clear it up if we go for look at his race. Mm-hmm. He is frigged up, like physically. <laughs> Yeah. Again, I think he's just like Jason. He's just a normal human, and you guys he, are just being mean. His in this face case he could be. In this case, he could be a normal human. There's just something bad happened. I don't know. I think he's a freaking gif Yankee. The way he looks so ugly. <laughs> no. Um. Lazel stands. Attack. <laughs> Come at me. I know all two of you. Um, <laughs> no. Oh, Taryn's got a good one. Actually, fire elemental dude. What's that mm-hmm. thing? What are those? Oh, oh uh, the Genasi. Oh, the Genasi. Yeah, fire Genasi. That I, True. I, I, I vibe with that. True. Are you saying that, Taryn, because make he that looks work. like a burn victim? Yes. Well, it's because isn't that he, isn't he supposed to be a burn victim? Yes. I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah, that's how he died. I, that's what I thought. But, I was like, am I doubting my my? <laughs> wait, so <laughs> that's like a horribly morbidly ironic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You get to be the the fire race uh, since you died via fire. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Uh. She's a fire. <laughs> this why was this so easy? He's a fire. Uh, he's a fire genasi shadow magic sorcerer. There okay, we yeah, sure. We did I'll the big it. three. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just specializes in mind magic, like dream. Yeah. The the Minecraft the hit Minecraft YouTuber. Do-do-do-do. Yeah, I think that's the thing that we're also kind of ignoring with like we're kind of going solely off of class features and not delving into like what their prepared spells and stuff would be. Dream. So I feel like we could, you could do some stuff with like mind fuckery still with just the sorcerer spells sticking with one subclass. We're not true. talking about Very the true. ramifications of the Minecraft speed run glitching. Yeah. Very lucky. <laughs> Very, he's just lucky guys. Mm-hmm. Freddy's just lucky. It's just like fatal. Um, Scorn. Let's go ahead, move on to the next. We promised, let's, I mean, we're zooming through these quicker than I we thought. Really we really are. We're going to have to find more slashers. Yeah, we are. Uh, we well, have like we got, six it prepped up. Uh, we, got we got well, Leatherface. We got Leatherface, Ghostface, Oh, wait, we have Chucky. another one? Oh, Ghostface. 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 Yeah, Ghostface, Ghostface time. Which which presents an interesting predicament because Ghostface is two people. It's several people. Throughout mm-hmm. the whole series, he's several people. Yeah, I'm going off of just straight scream. Uh, people straight, people straight, correct. It's, the first it's one will be easier. Wait, wait, <laughs> what's it called? I immediately am thinking of it. What's it called? Echo Knight. Huh, maybe. <laughs> he actually has shown off to have some fighting prowess. What else has he done? He called people. He prank called people. And then Terrence saying Arcane Trickster. No, Terrence, we already did Rogue. 
We're not. Well, yeah, we were not allowed. Oh, to are do we? Do, are we, we can't, strictly we're doing gonna, one and done? We're trying. We're, we're trying try. not to double dip. Yeah. yeah. And Terrence says, "Um, yeah, I would say Echo Knight's got a good potential. Otherwise, Echo Knight makes sense for the there being more than one of him. But I'm not sure. I I'm, I haven't thought about if it can go any farther than that or not." Mm. Well, I'm thinking that this gives us the opportunity since Ghostface is two people, maybe it is two characters working together with oh. different subclasses. <laughs> I've never seen mission. Ghostface, so I don't know what both of them specialize in. Well, they they're they're just like they're like a typical killer in like a murder mystery almost, but instead of being trapped in a house, they're separate. So they're people that just collude together and then they they interact with the main cast, not in their ghost face villain form. So yeah. they have to be charismatic and yeah. deceiving. If I remember correctly, they're just the the first ones at least are just two teenage assholes that are doing this because it's funny. Like it's yeah. that's Which, the whole thing. Fighters do get a bunch of ASI, so they could be they could have mm-hmm. charisma while also being martially. I feel like if we were to set it up as two separate characters, one would have to be like a bard. <laughs> I can see that the charismatic guy and mm-hmm. the other one would be the fighter the the muscle i feel like uh god what is his name the name has immediately escaped me fucking shaggy what is his name matthew shaggy? Lillard? yes matthew lillard oh. has to be the bard <laughs> hmm. the man yeah. behind the slaughter yes true almost true. not yet not oh. quite <laughs> <laughs> no i feel like matthew lillard has to be the bard if that's what we're if that's what we're doing two separate okay. characters Taryn Truing with College of Whispers, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's the one that makes the most sense. Because uh, that's the evil one, basically. Taren, evil bard. stop giving us answers. We're getting done too quick. <laughs> yeah, Taryn. <no. laughs> but if we do two separate characters, then the fighter becomes a bit more difficult because mm-hmm. then true, Echo Knight true. doesn't... Yeah. Doesn't have to be uh, Echo Knight. It's going to drive me nuts. Gunslinger. I cannot, I cannot <laughs> remember the names of Ghostface. Hold on. Yeah, I mean, either. I Scream, I like the first Scream. I didn't like that it kept going, because that's the one that I felt made the most or the least sense, because it was, you know, different people. <laughs> See, I haven't seen the movie, but I'm obsessed with the TV series. The TV series was really good. I only watched the first movie. I didn't watch the other movies, which I know there's five more. Scream 6 just came out not too long ago. But, and then I, I watched the parody movie, scare, uh, Scary Movie, which is hilarious. <laughs> Love Scary Movie. Um... He's never done anything magical. Again, the only other thing that he's really famous for is prank calling people and, and sneaking up on them. Even still, a lot of it is him like running at them. He didn't really sneak there, them. There is guns being used in the movie. People do get shot. True, but I don't think he uses them. I'm reading a synopsis right now, and one of the, one of the two does, yeah. Oh, okay. So maybe then. A seemingly wounded Billy returns and, spoilers, allows Randy inside before mm-hmm. shooting him in the shoulder, revealing himself as the killer. Yet yeah, Stu and Billy are the killers. They're ghost okay. guys. Yeah, because a lot of the other ones don't really make sense. Battlemaster, not really. Champion, definitely not. Eldritch Knight, no. Arcane Archer. Purple Dragon Knight, I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe Gunslinger, yeah. Okay, sure. Gunslinger, fighter. Yep. Oh... Mostly uses a little dagger, <laughs> but then also has the gun for backup. People never expect it. No. <laughs> he's he's only all right with the dagger, but then they don't they don't expect it when he whips out his piece. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, now, Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre stands out there. I have Leather. only seen. I've seen two of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. I saw I saw the very oldest one, the original, and I saw the very newest one, which was not very good. Um, at least not as good as the original. There was one funny moment in it, but I guess they probably don't aspire to have a funny moment in a horror movie, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless, there was one. Um, I think he's the barbarian. Mm. Yeah, I was. that's what I was going to say, too. His famous thing is at the end of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1 when he starts just swinging it around with it on, going crazy because he couldn't get the lady, the last lady. I feel like he's classic just berserker. He's just, he's full barbarian. Yeah. Mindless rage. Yep. Intimidating presence. Frenzy. Yeah. He's definitely not a zealot or a totem warrior. Mm-mm. Ancestral I think he's guardian. He's an ancestral guardian. <laughs> 
Oh, we forgot to pick the race for for Ghostface. I think they're both elves somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One's a high elf, the other one's a drow. I think that one's a gnome and the other is a halfling. We haven't gotten to Chucky yet. Mm. <laughs> Chucky is a gnome, 100%. Chucky, is... I'm going to spoil, is an auto gnome. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, True, actually. Yes, <laughs> Chucky and Tiffany um, both are auto gnomes. Really yeah. funny. <laughs> but for now, what is Leatherface? I mean, he's he's straight up a family of cannibals. So again, I am brought to mind of the grossest race in existence, the Gith Yankee and the Gith Zerai. Uh, I don't think they're cannibals. I they mean, look I, like they could be. I don't know. <laughs> oh, with him, I, I feel like I feel like Goliath, maybe, because I feel like he's a he's a he's big a big dude. dude, big boy. I feel like Goliath or an orc would probably be he, probably an orc, yeah. Powerful build, relentless endurance, mm-hmm. adrenaline rush, yeah. That tracks. Lizard folk do also eat people, though. True. Maybe he's just a cannibalistic orc. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's a half orc and the half is lizard. <laughs> True, real, <laughs> real for that. Oh, something uh, like that. <laughs> Can't wait for everybody to play these characters in a slasher mm, campaign. I please. would want it to be a battle royale. Person. Somebody one shot, do a slasher one shot. One shot. Where, where we That's all what play we do on Halloween. Oh my gosh. Pick your character. <laughs> okay. So that's Leatherface. Pretty simple. Next up, um, I want to bring one up because mm-hmm. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, What's his name? Hold on one second. <laughs> I agree. I, agree. I know exactly what yeah. you're talking about. Real, real. <laughs> John Kramer from Saw. Okay. Ooh, I, for artificer. a second, I didn't remember that was the name of the guy from Saw, and I thought you were talking about Kramer from Seinfeld. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no I, thought, I, was... I thought Seinfeld, and then I thought Kramer versus Kramer, the movie with Meryl Streep, and I was like, we're oh, back God. on Meryl Streep. Oh, she oh. looks comes back. Artificer makes the most sense. I forgot about that. At first, I was going to say cleric, um, because he has such a or baby paladin because he has such a righteous, strict rule for how mm. I could see vengeance paladin working. I would say just because all, all everything he does is reliant on like contraptions and making mm. traps and things. I would say he's just a very, very um, what's the word I'm looking for? Headstrong artificer i that's true i think too. he's just very that's convicted in his instinct. beliefs maybe he yeah, has he like a couple levels in paladin maybe he just has like the acolyte backstory mm-hmm. it does make it like he doesn't get any power from his like oath to vengeance or anything yeah he he gets all anything he does is from his his tools his mm-hmm. tinkering yeah which there's a trend going on right now of people using the reverse bear trap on tiktok which is really funny <laughs> it's people listing all the reasons why they would just wait out the 60 seconds and oh, it's like yeah, the, I have seen that. Yeah, it's like me waiting out the 60 seconds because the thing they're asking me to do is to not play Genshin for one day. Or I saw Something one like let, uh, letting the soft trap kill me because there were no subtitles on the videos, so I don't know what the hell he said. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Vent in a can. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Artificer makes sense. But what's his race? Remember, he has cancer. Puppet. <laughs> not an option what <laughs> sorry i got a little excited um, um i Biden to say he's a straight human what do you think i think he's a tiefling Te- okay why he's a little freak that's why <laughs> wow, and he has cancer was... <laughs> <laughs> I need to know where this open hostility towards <laughs> tieflings came from. They're devil people. That's where. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. He's a fairy. Now, hold on. I'm not going to hear you out. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't let him cook. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, tieflings are one of the base normal class they give charisma and intelligence. He has sure. followers like a cult and he's smart. Mm. I'll okay. give you that other than just uh, that with reasoning other than he has cancer and he's bad. That's not a reason. He does have cancer and he's bad. I don't think that's inherent to any one D&D race though. I don't know. I think I don't he's know. a plasmoid. What? 
Because you have to like, because for cancer, you have to like chemo, you inject into your, yeah, chemical It didn't plasma. work. He it's died. Deep. You don't know that. Spoilers. I do. It was in the second movie. <laughs> he comes back. But he doesn't. You haven't watched Saw 10 yet. He didn't come back. That was a flashback movie. You didn't go to SawCon. SawCon D's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> All right, audience, you can decide what race John Kramer is. Nobody knows because they've only interacted with the puppet. True. He's also an auto gnome. Uh, I think he's a Simic hybrid. <laughs> oh, we need we need more slashers. Uh, Chucky. Chucky is an auto gnome. Chucky's that an much auto gnome. decided, but what, but class? what class? That's a good, good question. Is he? He's just what? a little. He's just a little murderer. He's man. a little he's creature. Little yeah. yeah. <laughs> he keeps coming back somehow. Is he a druid Blood hunter? <laughs> no. Well, he has a knife. Hold on, I was actually looking at Monk real quick. Give me a second. <laughs> he do move fast. Auto no monk. I was thinking <laughs> auto no monk way of long death. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he can just <laughs> for the so- I like how in the very beginning with uh Michael Myers we were like, oh, there's all these things to consider, and now we're like, this class has this one thing <laughs> that, makes- <Boom. laughs> that makes them that that <laughs> very quickly devolved. No, I think he's an auto no way of long death monk. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. I yeah. I haven't watched like any of the Chucky movies. Um He's a dubious little creature. He's yeah. a dubious little creature. <laughs> what more slashers? More slashers. We need more. Oh, I'm blanking. Actually, maybe we should I do it backwards know now. <laughs> let's go instead. Let's go pick a slasher that represents a class that we haven't done. We haven't done a cleric. What's a cleric slasher? Um uh... Michael Myers. No. Dang. <laughs> I'm all out of ideas. Erm. Um, I'm trying to say I had one and it immediately left my brain. Pinhead? Pinhead actually would be. Pinhead he's would a, be a cleric. He's a priest. Mm-hmm. Oh, true. All right. Simple enough. Yeah. What subclass? Oh, uh, well, give me a second to look yeah. at the, the book. Um. <laughs> Oh, pinhead! Their whole thing is that they like like pain, and they want to like create pain for. Yeah, they're like dark elves from Warhammer. Yeah, Taryn's saying Tempest, but he spelled it wrong. How did you spell it, Taryn? Tempest. <laughs> uh... Oh my god! I found our next slasher. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to be like, "Yo, they made a they made a pinhead video again." No, it's just Dead by Daylight. I uh, my thing just completely ago. cut out. What? <laughs> Oh, we're ta- we're trying to figure out uh, uh, Pinhead's subclass. He's a cleric. Oh, okay. I don't think I don't think Tempest because Tempest it's saying is for for thunder and fire and physical strength and courage. That doesn't sound very Pinheady to me. Mm-hmm. Pinheady. I also I'd think say he's a <laughs> not because he has cancer though. I'd say. Death. The straight death, up death domain. I mean, because that's the that's like the closest thing to like a pain mm-hmm. domain. How um, do they not have a pain domain? I, I guess there's also war, but that's not quite the same. There is war. But I, yeah, was, I was looking at that's what I'm looking at right now is war. I think he's a peace domain cleric. Yo! Hmm. Ooh, what also... about order domain? Maybe. I have I haven't watched his movie either. <laughs> well, because he's kind of I, I I haven't watched it, but I have studied it, and if what I'm remembering, he's kind of like the, uh, not necessarily the leaders, uh, the leader of the hell monsters. He's whatever, like the only one like, that talks. He's the only out one that's the three of them. Fun fact: the reason for that, he was not supposed to have all of the lines. Uh, the other characters in the movie, they're special effects makeups were so hard for them to articulate and speak in that they gave all the lines to Pinhead. Mm. I thought I remember hearing that from somewhere before. <laughs> uh, Demons, the character himself, describes himself in his fellow Cenobites as explorers in the further regions of experience. Demons to some, angels to others. Knowledge domain? 
He, I'm still sticking. He definitely is at least a feral tiefling. I'll give him that. They are denizens different. of hell, uh, ruled a uh, dimension ruled by an entity called Leviathan. Uh huh. Um, get your R's go at you out, kids. Hellraiser three portrayed Pinhead as a purely evil demon of chaos. So not order then. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and in Hellraiser four, he is presented as a megalomaniac bent on world domination. So then, maybe order. <laughs> in Inferno, he acts as a judge, punishing those who open the box for their sins and forcing them to face their personal demons. And he uses the title engineer in that film. Mm. Oh, maybe he's a paladin then. Mm. Mm. He's one of those. <laughs> he's something. He's one of the things we've said so far. <laughs> Synobium. Unobtainium. <laughs> um, what about I want to hear what's a druid? We need a druid slasher. I don't know. I had I had an idea for another slasher when we get back to the like name first, then class though. Druid slasher. Druid. Um I'm trying to think of all the movies I've seen where animals are killers. Cujo. Jaws. Jaws <laughs> yeah. is a druid. <laughs> the Meg. <laughs> um, the Creeper. Oh! Oh, from Jeepers? From Jeepers Creepers. Probably. Okay. Because doesn't he do like some, some weird transformative stuff? Trying to like transmogrify and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's, he's more of weird. like a, maybe he's like a wizard who's like modifying himself they're yeah it's close for that one because they're weird he doesn't really transform into an animal really he, he has a, yeah he just like grows things to use mm -hmm. he has a close connection with bats yeah um if we want to talk freak. about if we want to talk about druid does uh the thing from the thing that's kind of what i was druid? beginning to think a little bit <laughs> a druid that can't fully wild shape so they do that or if you, what or if you subscribe to the theory that um Kurt Russell's character is the thing. Kurt Russell is the druid and it's all kinds of fucked up wild shape. True. All right. How about a ranger who's got a pet that kills for them? Or is like a ranged killer. I'm thinking like the predator from Alien versus Predator or just predator <laughs> movies. But uh, are we expanding our our range too wide from what a slasher is if we go to predator? <laughs> No, I feel like that's still kind of that's still in that like classic horror movie mm. vein. I'm pretty sure their first movie was the one that took place in Vietnam or South America, one or the other. I do not remember. And there were um there were American GIs in there and they were yeah. like we got to figure out what's going on and then the predator like rounded them all up and was killing them all. I, I remember the the El Hugeni uh music video. Yeah. I did, watch the the I did watch the most recent Predator movie and it was pretty good. It was on Hulu. I'm trying to remember what it was called. It wasn't called Predator, but it was it was something around that. Um, but the Predator was featured and it was really cool. I remember watching a Predator movie that came out also in like 2018. Mm. Uh, oh no, this was like last maybe. year. Mm. I'm not, that's going to bug me. I got to figure Wasn't out. Wasn't it The called. Predator? Or was it, no, it was Prey. Yes, Prey. that's what it was. It was a good movie. The Predator was 2018. That's yes. the one I watched. I didn't like that yeah. one that much. That one was kind of bad. I might have to watch Prey, though. Okay. That's most of the classes accounted for, then. If we put all the ones that we put them in. Mm -hmm. The only one that's not I still is, like, think Blood we Hunter. should do Patrick Bateman. I, Blood Hunter. I really <laughs> the one that I thought of earlier. Norman Bates. Um, Oedipus. Well, yeah, but we got to figure out what D&D &D class that is. Doesn't do anything special. Doesn't have any, like, special powers like some of the other ones we've mentioned. So it has to be, almost has to be a marshal. It... I'm not sure. If Michael Myers At is this a scout, point, maybe this one's the assassin. <laughs> I was about mm -hmm. to say, yeah, I think, we've I think we've taken one from everything now, so we will have to double up. Yeah, well, we'll have to double up for this one, but I just wanted to talk about uh, Norman Bates. Mm-hmm. I agree with Pertusid. He's probably rogue. He does also, uh, imposter and infiltration expert, make more sense on Norman Bates than Michael Myers. You yeah. Because, well, you know, if you watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I want to see Norman Bates and Jason Voorhees in a room together. Just two men talking to their dead moms. It's so mm. it's so many mommy issues. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And then Patrick Bateman is the DM. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So today <laughs> we're gonna start our campaign in the war. <sighs> Freddy Krueger is immediately calling everyone the B word. Mm. Uh, Freddy Krueger is 100% Oh, no, guys, it's what my character though. would say, bitch. <laughs> it's like Jesse Pinkman. Uh, <laughs> oh. And Taryn, you can choose who you want to be. Do you want to be Michael or you want to be Jason? Because you're being silent either way. No. <laughs> Mickle again, Mads Mickelson. <laughs> I like to imagine that every time uh, Michael Myers opens his mouth at the table, it's just that that comes out. There's no words. It's just <laughs> and then steam. when Jason does it, it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why did they do that? I don't know. <laughs> the, don't ask me. I didn't write the movie. The yes, Michael Myers mad. one kind of makes sense. It's creepy. It's a little piano mm. ditty. It but... gives it some like suspenseful feeling. The actual Friday the 13th OST is just music and then suddenly interspersed with <laughs> like why? Because he's like, yeah, he bre we... he's breathing down your neck. <laughs> I guess or something. Why is it echoey? Why is it so you don't uh, know where he's coming stop from? Stop thinking. I I <laughs> I'll have you're overanalyzing this. <laughs> Want well, someone overanalyzing horror film? No, never. <laughs> Oh, all right. So we've we've laid them out now. If you had to play one of these one of these characters, who would you play in a one oh, shot, man. a battle royale? Well, no, I don't. Just just I, a one shot. I would want to play Saul just because I would want to get to do the Saul voice the entire time. It would be so fun. You gotta I'd speak go... with a puppet. <laughs> yeah, I'd go either Freddy or Chucky for the bit. I wanted to do Chucky for the bit. <laughs> trap. The door is just locked behind us. <laughs> We're. Guess. We are stuck in a room. I definitely would want to be Leatherface just so I could run around going. Rrrr. That's not the chainsaw. That's just how he talks. It's just, it's just you making chainsaw noises. No, he. That's if there's very little times he's talked. He doesn't talk. He just grunts. He just, yeah. Yeah, he's not silent like Jason and Michael. He just, he just grunts. <laughs> yeah. I've, con I've, constru I've constructed an, an artificer item which actually makes me immune to the gas. DM. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> hey, we hope you enjoyed the episode you just listened to. If you really like our content, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on YouTube, and look for us on Spotify. If you'd like to see us continuing to do more fun projects in the future, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find our page linked in the description above all of our other social media links. And finally, if you'd like to keep up with the zany shenanigans of our lives and check out some more skit-based content and things like that, check us out on Twitter and TikTok. Links in the description. And hey, thanks. <laughs>